What is up, engine heads? As you can see, today we are in the garage, and that's because I wanted to use my old junk cylinder head to demonstrate something very important when it comes to camshaft duration. Now, actually, my original plan was to bring this into the apartment and film there, but my wife doesn't let me bring uh, old, dirty, stinky car parts into the house anymore, so we're in the garage. Now, I'm gonna assume that you know what a camshaft is and what it does. And as you probably know, two of the most important attributes of any camshaft are its lift and its duration. Camshaft lift determines how much a valve gets open. It determines the maximum distance of the valve from its seat. On the other hand, camshaft duration determines how long a valve stays open. It determines its time off the seat. There really isn't anything misleading when it comes to lift. Your valves reach a maximum opening distance that is expressed in millimeters or inches, and that's your valve lift. It's a simple number and it really is impossible to misrepresent something when it comes to lift. On the other hand, duration can be a bit more tricky and deceiving. And to see why, we have to observe the camshaft as it opens and closes the valves. Okay, now watch what happens. So as the camshafts rotate, the camshaft lobes come to a point where they press on the shim and the spring underneath and crack open the valve. This is the starting point for measuring camshaft duration. As the camshaft rotates more, it opens the valve more until it eventually reaches maximum lift. As the camshaft continues to rotate, the valve starts to come back until it eventually fully returns to its seat. This is the ending point for measuring camshaft duration. Now camshaft duration is expressed in degrees of crankshaft rotation. Confused yet? Well, there's no need to be honestly because it is fairly simple. This intake camshaft, for example, has a duration of 240 degrees. And what that simply means is that the intake valves stay open for 240 degrees out of the 360 degrees of a single full rotation of the crankshaft. Pretty simple, right? Well, unfortunately it's not, because this raises a very important question. And the question is, at what point do we start measuring camshaft duration? At what amount of valve lift do we start and end the measurement of camshaft duration? Do we start when the valve is 0.1 millimeters off the seat, or maybe 1.2 millimeters off the seat? Or does it even matter? Well, it definitely matters, because the valve lift point at which you measure duration has significant impact on the final value of camshaft duration. And while the difference between 0.1 and 1 millimeter might not seem like much, in reality, the opposite is true. For example, this particular intake camshaft that we're observing today, which is a OEM Toyota 4AGE 16 valve engine intake camshaft, it has 240 degrees of camshaft duration when you measure at 0.1 millimeters of valve lift. On the other hand, it only has 204 degrees of camshaft duration when you measure at 1.2 millimeters of valve lift. That's a difference of 36 degrees of duration, and this is very significant when it comes to camshaft duration. Some other engines with some different types of valve trains have an even more significant difference in duration when measured at different valve lift points. So with all of this, you would expect that there's some universally agreed upon standard that everybody respects and uses to measure their camshaft duration. And there is. The SAE, or the Society for Automotive Engineers, set the standard to start measuring duration when the valve lifter is 0.006 inches off its seat. Now, don't let the valve lifter versus valve thing confuse you. You can measure lift at different points on the engine depending on the valve train, but for the sake of simplicity and demonstration purposes of this video, we're going to treat all of these valve lift point measurements as one and the same thing, because in reality they pretty much are. And what you have to remember about the SAE standard is that it never really caught on. Not many people use it at all. What actually caught on was the standard set by Harvey Crane, a true pioneer of the racing industry in the United States. And he set the standard to start measuring camshaft duration when the valve lifter is 0.05 inches off its seat. 
and this is what actually caught on. And today, when you're shopping for performance camshaft upgrades for any of the mainstream staple muscle car engine choices in the United States, any camshaft manufacturer worth their salt is gonna give you two camshaft duration values, measured at two different valve lift points. One is going to be the standard at 0.05 inches of valve lift, and the other one is going to be advertised camshaft duration, and sometimes they will tell you at what lift point it is measured, and sometimes they won't. And many different manufacturers have many different advertised camshaft duration measuring standards. But the cool thing is that in the United States, for mainstream muscle car engines, you're gonna be able to properly compare camshafts. Unfortunately, when it comes to many other camshafts and many other engines around the world and many other different camshaft manufacturers, things aren't as clear. And many use different standards, uh, different valve lift points. Some won't even tell you at what lift point is the duration measured. They're just gonna give you the duration. And all this can make things confusing and comparisons of different camshaft options for the same engines pretty inaccurate and misleading. And things can get even worse if you start shopping for cams on Facebook groups or forums or elsewhere on the internet where camshaft duration values are thrown around very often without the all-important valve lift point at which duration was measured. So if you don't have a mainstream muscle car engine and you want to tune your Japanese or German or whatever other engine and you want to buy some performance camshafts, comparing different camshafts can be a bit of a nightmare. Now let's see how it actually happens and how it actually works in real life on a concrete example. Let's imagine we want to buy some performance camshafts for this particular engine, the Toyota 4AG E16 valve big port engine. So let's imagine that after browsing a bit online, we have found these two attractive camshaft choices for our engine. One is from CAT cams and the other one is from Kelford cams. Now both CAT cams and Kelford are pretty cool because they both give you two different camshaft duration values. One is their advertised duration and the other one is duration measured at one millimeter of valve lift, which is pretty standard when it comes to non-US engines. Now, if you only had the advertised duration, you would think that the Kelford cam has more duration than the CAT cam. But this is because CAT and Kelford measure their advertised duration differently. CAT cams measures at 0.1 millimeters and Kelford measures at 0.3 millimeters. But because you also have duration at one millimeters of valve lift, you can see that in fact, it's the CAT cam that has more duration than the Kelford cam. But as I said, both of these manufacturers are pretty cool and they give you full insight into their duration measurements so you can make an informed and educated choice for your engine. Now let's introduce a third camshaft choice. These are the Pond cams from Tomei, a pretty famous and popular choice for the Toyota 4AG E16 valve engine. And the leaflet and the information presented here tells you how Tomei tested many different prototypes and how this is a true and a feeling responsive, smooth idling camshaft. Uh, they also give you this little dyno sheet so you can see the power gains. Uh, but on the other hand, their duration numbers are incomplete. You have no idea at what valve lift point was this duration measured. So you really can't properly compare this camshaft to either the Kelford or the CAT cam. And while I'm certain that Tomei makes great products, this information alone doesn't allow you to make an informed, educated choice for your engine. Your best bet would be to buy these cams, install them on your engine and get a dial indicator and a degree wheel and measure duration yourself. Or at least hope that somebody already did it and posted it somewhere online and that you can trust that measurement. Without all of that, the information offered here really is incomplete. And this is just one example. There are many other camshafts out there that give you duration numbers without the valve lift point. So what's the key takeaway from all of this? Well, the key takeaway is that advertised camshaft duration numbers, or in fact, any duration numbers without the valve lift at which they were measured can be pretty misleading. So the next time you wanna buy cams from the dude in the Facebook group, make sure to ask him about the valve lift point at which duration was measured. Because really that's the only way to properly compare different camshaft options for the same engine. So yeah. 
That's pretty much it when it comes to this little video. I hope you found it useful and informative. I also hope it's helpful for your future camshaft upgrades. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A Engine Bootcamp.